What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is July 29th of 2019. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are and in today's video, we've got a few main key topics to focus in on. We're not only going to be taking a look at price action from taking a look at BTC to some altcoins that we're watching, but along with that as well, the continuing growth in the supply of Tether on the open market and whether or not this is a growing problem as we have continued conflict between Tether Limited as well as the New York Attorney General's office. And last but not least, the Philippines continuing to push positive in the nature of cryptocurrencies and opening up financial payment networks. So we've got lots of things to discuss. Let's not push it off any longer right after our quick sponsor. Our sponsor for this episode is Travala.com. Now, for those of you out there who are planning your next trip for either work or leisure, I highly recommend you check out Travala.com to place your next hotel booking. They not only provide a wide range of selections for places to stay along your travels, but also can provide upwards of 15 to 40% in discounts compared to other leading rates on booking websites. And to top it all off, you can use Bitcoin, Litecoin, XRP, and a basket of other cryptocurrencies to place your next booking. So if you want to learn more about Travala.com, check out the link down below in the description to find out more. Alrighty, everyone. So let's go ahead and take a look across the board for the market. As we can see, not only is Bitcoin in a relative no trend scenario, but along with that, most cryptocurrencies aren't taking on any trend. Most are between one to two percent to the upside or the downside as Bitcoin pushes sideways. And what we're starting to see, and this has been kind of a growing trend, it's been getting closer and closer to this over the last few weeks, is that as Bitcoin starts to lose its ground here, we're not seeing a significant loss in Bitcoin dominance. We haven't seen that one two percent daily drop that I've been talking about that I want to see before altcoins really go out swinging and before I average down even more. But along with that, the uh, the fact of the matter is, is that markets are actually quite flat right now. Other coins not making any serious moves. Bitcoin dominance staying flat over the last three or four days. So right now, it just seems like markets are in a relatively quiet period. There have been some you know significant kind of up uh, upticks and downticks in Bitcoin. But again, it's it's whale manipulation, guys, or it, on both sides. It's just people basically you know pushing spot price around uh, like a like a toy, and they're they're trade they're trying to trade against each other. They're trying to trade against retail investors, whoever it may be, in order to make some quick money on leverage exchanges. But the fact of the matter is, is right now we're just not seeing any significant moves. So we shouldn't get too worried about prices, guys. I will never do that, guys. I know some people love to overanalyze the market, whether a viewer as a viewer of a channel or as a content creator. Guys, I want to be fair with you guys. I will never try to overdo price. I've told you guys as I've um, been watching the market here, I've had my general lines that I've been watching. I've been using a little bit of the moving averages to look for some potential target ranges, some key indicators that I'm watching. But... I really don't really stress about it too much, guys. I don't think you should either. Um, and I'll be honest, I just don't think I'm qualified to be able to trade against these kind of sporadic moves that no one can predict in the market in a very short term. But I don't mind doing some TA. I love TA. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is, is that my favorite part of TA is when I apply naked trading, which is just simply looking for support and resistance and looking for usually good price levels, corrections, in the sense of where uh, price can not only go, but also where buyers are likely to come in, historically speaking. So what I do love to see here, guys, that I don't think a lot of people have been talking about is that as we saw a general trend here in the sense, I'm going to actually switch my color here because it's a good thing. As we can see here, with the continuation of the bull market, we actually had higher levels of kind of um, upside daily volume in this case, right? We started getting uh, more and more buyers coming along here. And not to mention, this is in Bitcoin. This isn't in you know, US dollars. So this means that as the dollar amount per Bitcoin was increasing, we were also getting an increased amount of Bitcoin being traded. So that's a dull positive in that case. Uh, you would usually expect as the price to goes higher, as the price goes higher, that the Bitcoin volume would remain relatively the same or actually decline. Uh, but that means we had an increase of liquidity trading in these markets. And the other thing that I like as well, and I'm also going to have it as a green line, even though it's going to the downside, it's a good thing, is that we've been having declining volume here. Now, most people, again, uh, I think overcomplicate, uh, you know, trying to do a lot of TA. But one thing that I love to see, it's very, very simple, is that as we've had this declining volume, it's, it's the exact same thing that a lot of people uh, did on the weekly here, uh, is that we want to see a major breakout against the trend here. So we've been having declining days of volume. I want to see a big green candle come in, pushing us back above 10,000. And I think that's when we're really going to start the reversal of the trend. That being realized, I'm not trying to, because um, I think that that breakout is going to be so big, I'm not going to wait until then. I've been, I've been averaging down at these prices anywhere around 8,000 to 9,000. Again, 
And if it goes down anywhere in the $7,000 range, I'm, I'm picking it up, guys. I'm not trying to trade this market. I'm trying to accumulate. The thing I will trade is altcoins. Now, I've told you guys. Um, sorry, I keep saying I told you guys. I don't mean to say it sounds so pretentious in that sense. What I mean is that, as I've talked about in previous episodes, uh, I've been talking about a few key altcoins that I'm keeping my eye on. Actually, we're going to take a look at the Bitcoin comparative here. I actually want to do the uh, Bitcoin comparative chart because we're now starting to compete against Bitcoin in this case, or at least we're talking about competing against Bitcoin. And we can see here that take a, I'll go ahead and take off my drawings here. One of the plays that I've been talking about that I'm really confident on is basic attention token. Now, the nice thing I like about this that I've seen in previous rallies in the past, or at least the exit out of the accumulation phase and starting onto the next cycle, is that you want to see continuous higher lows here, right? We can see, for example, as we take a look historically, we continue to print higher lows as we start to enter into the big trend in the long term. Higher lows pretty much every time. We don't revisit down to lower price levels on the Bitcoin comparative. And it's the same over here as well. Well, look at what we're doing now. We're, we've added an, uh, a low here for the chart. At a very nice low level comparative to the upper 9,000 Satoshi range back at the peak of the previous cycle. And we've set higher lows here, higher lows here. And that's what I'm going to be looking for here, basic, basic attention token. I want to see this set a low no further than 2,500 sats and really kind of make support on the resistance that it was at over the last few days. So that's what I'm looking for. And it's not just basic attention token. It's also in some of my other top picks. I've talked about Link, for example, Chainlink. Again, on this bigger, longer term uptrend, we've been seeing higher lows every single time. I would love to see this hold at 22,000 sats uh, because this is kind of where resistance was last time. Wouldn't be the end of the world if it came down to 20,000 sats, but I've got some limit orders placed if price continues to go down to average in. If it bounces up today, I'll average in. But again, I'm keeping patient on it. And again, same trend as we talked about with Bitcoin. Huge increases in the buy side of the amount of link being or um, Bitcoin. Or sorry, no, it's that, that they do measure by link here. Um, so the amount of link being traded at higher dollar volumes. No serious sell side as we've pushed down price uh, a good amount. We're down about 44% in the Bitcoin comparative, which is really good. This is correction territory. We've seen that in the past, anywhere between the upper 30% to uh, lower 40% range, this is usually when we want to get bullish because that's usually when price is a buy and then we see price go higher, okay? And uh, there was one other one I want to take a look at. We take a look, we take a look at BAT and LINK. Last one I'll take a look at is Ravencoin. And again, same exact case scenario here. Hiring lows, right? Now, in the previous cycles, we've seen things move much faster. Uh, so I can understand how this might have some people concerned, but I don't think, again, Ravencoin in this case, just like any other player, the general altcoin space, as we've seen, has been quite neutral. So long as it's gaining right now, this gives me signs of confidence. And the reason that is, is because, you know, in a market where things have been stagnant and a lot of altcoins have just been absolutely flushed out of the market, they're showing signs of strength. They're holding when Bitcoin's correcting, they're not dropping too much, or they're sometimes gaining, as we saw with basic attention over the last few days. So again, these are the kind of players you want to look for, guys. I understand there are a lot of great protocols. I know in the altcoin videos, some people were disappointed they didn't have their coin in there. The fact of the matter is, guys, I'm looking more than anything in my trader mindset. I'm looking for a momentum. And these projects have a lot of the solid fundamentals that a fundamental investor would look for. A lot of my uh, traders that I really respect in this space who have traded in previous markets and really made a quick, you know, a good good amount of money investing in traditional markets as well as crypto. They apply a, you know, a very long-term philosophy to their trading strategy. They aren't trading the daily time frame. They're not just you know dumping money into 10 or 50 different protocols. They're really trying to pick key winners that the market is sending signals are going to win out in 2019 and 2020. Okay, So that's my kind of philosophy for it, guys. Just thought I'd run over those because those were three of my top picks uh, for the video that I did. But let's go ahead here and dive into the news, guys. So there's been continuing growing developments between the New York Attorney General, uh, and there's a lot of different parts to this discussion. There's concerns about Tether. There is concerns in relation to uh, crypto, I think it was crypto payments, uh, the company that basically uh, hundreds of millions of dollars that were supposedly backing Tethers uh, for Tether Limited uh, had gotten now, they're now frozen under that account. And along with that as well, the worry about uh, Bitfinex conducting a potential securities offering with the Leo token. So these are all of the things that are kind of uh, kind of making up the core part of the discussion. And there's still uh, you know a lot of developments that need to be made. For example, this headline just came out literally an hour or two ago. 
or Tether disputes the inaccurate and misleading accusations by the New York Attorney General. And they basically stated that, you know, they have fulfilled uh, obligations in regards to creditors in this case from not only to Tether Limited, they've, they've always had, they've never had deposit issues, or sorry, withdrawal issues in the sense of regaining deposits that have been used for Tether. And along with that, the Leo token is not a security offering. Okay, these are kind of some of the big things they really push back against. Because when it comes to uh, potential worry of securities, the New York Attorney General does have, I mean, again, I know you guys out there might I, I disagree morally. And heck, I really don't think the New York Attorney General should get too involved in this kind of stuff. I think U.S. sometimes does overreach in the sense of its regulatory power. Fact of the matter is, though, is that they do have some jurisdiction over this when we're dealing with securities. Because even if it's uh, you know at a distance here on the sense of ge geography, if you're dealing with any kind of security offering to people that the U.S. has jurisdiction over, or as well, uh, you know, is dealing with the, the framework of securities law, it tends to be that countries will follow U.S. regulations in this case. It is tended that securities law that the United States said is kind of the gold standard in a lot of manners. So again, there's a lot of things to take into account. Now, they're on some offshore island. We don't really know all the details here. Again, I'm not any kind of legal attorney, so I wouldn't be able to give you guys a full scope of this. But again, the major thing that I take away from this is towards the end of the article here. And Bitfinex kind of makes the case that they're they're talking about not only uh, is the Leo token really kind of, uh, in a sense, kind of a voucher in this case. It's basically a loan repayment, and it's an evidence that Bitfinex is financially healthy and growing. The fact that they're able to buy up the Leo tokens that they granted to users, but along with that, that they're saying how there's never been uh, issues to this day of Tether withdrawing uh, people withdrawing money that's being used to back Tether. But the fact of the matter is, is there actually was a case. Um, there was a case here, for example, from an individual that Bloomberg reported last year, a Turkish trader going by the name of Ugaz Serdar, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, had been unable to redeem his tethers after attempting to cash out with, it, with, with the exchange citing an insufficient amount of verification, advising him to withdraw his funds via other exchanges despite having previously onboarded him. So this to me is quite interesting I, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the story i have no doubt that tether has had issues in the past bitfinex says one thing and sometimes does another uh that's a lot of crypto companies but again I i've seen that too many times here with uh, bit the things that bitfinex has brought up in the past we'll have to see though you know i mean tether for the most part does work quite well can't lie uh you know it people use it it's the most liquid stable coin out there and that's the thing that I'm worried about, guys. No matter if uh, you know we, we see the full picture here and Bitfinex is completely innocent or not, Tether has doubled its market cap in the last four months. That, to me, is a little bit concerning. Uh, the fact that there hasn't been, uh, similar to true USD, similar to uh, Paxos, a lot of the stable coins that are in the United States have been regulated properly and uh, you can see have had inflows and outflows over time that work really well. It's actually, it's very streamlined, simple. Coinbase and, um, you know, Gemini stablecoin as well. Uh, works works fine, USD coin, they all work great. Um, and they're audited to a very high degree. Tether's not. And I don't know if it's, for example, that it's fractionally reserved, or if it is backed one-to-one, -one, if it's made up of other assets on the books of Bitfinex, right? We still don't have a full understanding of this. The only thing we know is that on the website for Tether is that they said it was backed by a wide range of assets, not just dollars. So again, uh, there's there's so many, you know, he said, she said kind of moments in this, this case with Tether. And I have to say, I, I know I'm not the only one who has been concerned the last few months that this has pretty much doubled the amount of Tether in the market. Has this been used to prop up crypto markets in this last bull run? I would have no doubt about it. Uh, but at the same time, I'm more worried in this case, what happens if Tether, again, as we've been worrying about for some time, faces some serious issues? I'll be honest, you know, for example, let's say tomorrow that Tether had fractional reserves, like it had 50% of the reserves required to back up the value that it created, meaning it had $2 billion of dollars or assets backing up the $4 billion it created. I'll be honest, guys, I don't think it would affect that much because Tether, in a sense, just like a bank, you know, 50% ratio on reserve would actually be much better than most banks out there, surprisingly. So I honestly, as crazy as it sounds, as much as it's hypocritical in nature to what crypto is about, it's why Tether's not a cryptocurrency, it's a stable coin. Um, fact of the matter is, this is a little bit concerning, you know. So 
Anyways, I'd love to know what you guys think about it. Again, I've got mixed emotions on it. I love in the sense that, you know, Tether is kind of outside of the banking system. It's really tried to push and help further crypto adoption with stable coins. Uh, it was one of the first to pioneer in this with Tether and Tether Limited. But at the same time, I'm genuinely concerned that they might be stepping out of the range. I'm curious, what dollars are backing up this 4 billion Tether if they actually do have the money? I can tell you working in the offshore, well, not, not myself working in the offshore world, but knowing the offshore world, uh, I can bet they're probably not the cleanest dollars. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, the largest bank in the Philippines has a piece of positive news. The largest bank in the Philippines has launched its own cryptocurrency. Now, I want to go ahead, as always, and make it very clear that journalists love to misuse the term crypto ter cryptocurrency cryptocurrency uh and that is that this is not a cryptocurrency as we mentioned with tether this is a stable coin created by the bank but they're aiming to help broaden the access of financial services to a variety of participants with this new um, filipino peso stable coin this is pretty cool the philippines is an area where there needs to be a lot of innovation and in finance to uplift a lot of the poverty uh, that is currently you know, president in the nation. I saw it for the short time I was in the Philippines. There's so many wonderful people there. It's such a great country. People are so nice. Um, and they just want to get access to financial services, to banking. And this is something that I think will help push that forward. So again, it's a stable store of value you can exchange on a one-to-one -one ratio with Filipino pesos at the represented banks. And it's really good to see Union Bank in this case making you know, kind of strides in this area, especially in a country that needs it. So again, we'd love to get your guys intake on this. Let me know what your thoughts are. But that's going to be it for today's video. Some exciting stuff going on in the Philippines. Yet again, the continued worries and the sense of tether growing on. We've got some interesting altcoins in the market that we're keeping an eye on. And the overall market is keeping relatively silent at the moment. But I believe over the next few days, we could be preparing for something big. So guys, stay tuned. Keep active in the crypto space, trade smart, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned.